Hello, welcome to Insignia Investments. My name is Rupratim Dotto, and today I'm going to discuss with you the top five market anomalies that you should be aware of as an individual investor living to invest money in the Indian stock markets. Let's begin. Financial markets is a thorough mix of logic, emotion, meticulous modeling, sheer luck, optimism, and pessimism. I bet there are very few markets globally that can rival the dynamism of the Indian stock markets. And a lot of people have actually put in effort to model these markets, and some of them are really popular. But there are times when these meticulously designed models do fail, and such instances when they occur repeatedly are called market anomalies. You must be aware about the most common and the most notorious among these anomalies so that you do not fall prey to them when they start cropping up in the market. Most of the modern market theories are based on asset pricing and the two most common among them are the efficient market hypothesis popularly known as EMH and the capital asset pricing model CAPM. Now, most of you might not have heard of these, and these are technical jargons, but I'm sure you have seen CAPM in action. I bet you have seen a beta in the stock description for all stocks out there. That is the gift of CAPM. So most of the modern theories out there try to describe the movement of prices and the returns that you get from stocks. But there are times when these models fail, and that's when the anomalies set in. These are called anomalies because initially, at the onset, they seem to be disturbances that you cannot explain using the conventional model. But there are explanations for the same because they just go against the conventional understanding that we have about the stock market and the models that we work with. So now that you have a background idea about what anomalies are, let's look at the most notorious and the top five among these anomalies so that you're better prepared to handle them when they arrive in the market. The first among these is the small firm market anomaly. Now I'm sure most of you have received advice to always invest your money in blue chip investments and to stay away from risky small firms. Now, that might be really intuitive, but statistics has something completely counterintuitive. The research has been thoroughly carried out and it has been found that the small firm stocks have repeatedly outperformed the blue chip big stocks. Now, this might be counterintuitive and against the models that we use, but let me pull out a graph and put it into perspective for you how this works in the Indian markets. Now, look at this graph. The red line here depicts the growth in the price of the nifty small cap. The blue line on the other hand depicts the growth of the Nifty 50. Both have been recalibrated on a specific date to zero to show you how the growth has been. Now it is pretty evident from this graph that over the last 8 months the Nifty small cap has thoroughly beaten out the Nifty 50. Now why is this so? If it's counterintuitive there has to be an explanation. Analysts usually provide the explanation that because small firms are small and usually have much more flexibility associated with it, they can respond better to changing customer demands. Now this renders itself to be the harbinger of good news and positive sentiments for the stock price and hence the outperformance. On the second hand, it is far easier to grow your sales volume from 100 rupees to 110 rupees than from 1 lakh rupees to 110,000 rupees because of the laws of diminishing returns that are active in the market. Because of these two factors, analysts say that the small firm market annually exists. Now, can you make money out of this? My suggestion is, yes, you can. But you need to identify a bull run for this. Whenever a bull run is evident, you can buy stocks of the small firms during the dips and make money consistently as long as the bull run is existing. The second anomaly that we're going to discuss today is akin to the first one. It's called the neglected firm anomaly. Now, a lot of times you'll see, if you're following the news and the apps that are out there in the market today, that all these people usually talk about a certain set of stocks and really do not discuss firms whose balance sheet valuation is below a certain threshold. These firms usually do not have a lot of analyst support and are usually not traded in high volume in the market. These are known as neglected firms and neglected stocks respectively. What usually happens is they are like viruses and remain dormant all throughout their lives until and unless an institutional investor discovers them and finds in them the potential to be a growth stock. Now when the information decimates all across the market, a lot of buy pressure is created on these stocks and the prices spikes all the way up from a single digit all the way up to a three digit sum. 
Now that is what happens and that is exactly when a lot of money can be generated by holding these stocks and later shorting them out in the long run. To put this into perspective, I'm pulling out another graph where it's shown that the CAPM excess return as well as the risk free rate excess return for these small neglected firms is much higher, tremendously higher than the large blue chip investments. Now, can you make money out of it? I will say steer clear of this. It's really difficult to figure out which one will be able to provide you money and as an individual investor, you will not have enough influence in the market to create that buy pressure. The next anomaly on the list is called the calendar effect. This is probably the most well-known anomaly out there. What it says is that during certain months of the year, you can expect higher returns from the market when compared against other months. This was first observed in the US and research says that it took place in the month of January. Indian investors were actually skeptical of this initially and probably they still are because their fiscal year runs from January to December while our fiscal year runs from April to March. So to comment on this, we dug out a few research papers. You can refer to the same in the blog that we have provided for this video in the description box below as well as on the card. So the research paper says that calendar effect is actually existent in India and you can actually expect better returns in the month of December. To cross verify this, we took the monthly returns of Nifty 50 from 1990 to 2017 and across these 25 odd years, December actually provided the highest number of times when a positive return was registered. That is actually around 19 out of the 24 odd cases. Whereas you compare this to the month of March, you only get around 10. So I guess December is definitely a month to be jolly. The fourth anomaly on the list is called the low book value anomaly. Now this is one of the weaker anomalies on the list. What it says is that stocks with lower PE ratio or the lower PB ratio usually outperform the market. Now the logic follows directly from value investing. If a stock has a lower PE or a lower PB, what it directly means is there is a lot of headspace that is available for the PE or the PB to revert to the mean market PE or PB. Because this exists and you add to this a lower stock price for these there is a lot of space where this stock can grow and provide you with abnormal returns. So can you make money out of this? I really do not think so because if a market has assigned a lower PB or a lower PE, it means that the market has thought about that stock's price, reacted to it and that is exactly the value it wants to provide for that stock. So I do not see a lot of arbitrage happening from this and I will suggest you to steer clear of the same. The last anomaly on our list is that of reversals. I'm sure you have heard a common adage, today was your day, tomorrow will be mine. Funnily enough, the stock market seems to be believing in this. And it says that within a short span of 12 months, today's winners become tomorrow's losers and today's losers become tomorrow's winners. The logic for the same is provided along the lines of mean reversion based on dynamic non-equilibrium. What this means is that initially an undervalued stock is discovered by many investors people start pouring in more money and the price of this stock rises to a point when the stock is actually overvalued. The reverse sell side pressure increases and the price again starts plummeting downwards. This creates a cycle of the price for the stock. And this is exactly what happens for overpriced stocks that are today's highest gainers and for the underpriced stocks that are today's highest losers. And they reverse their positions within a short span of 12 months. The research seems to suggest this time period and frequency. So can you make money out of this? The most vital question. I think rather than trying to make money out of this anomaly, you should carry forward an investment philosophy. That is, you should not remain invested in a singular security for too long a time. You should value a security, buy it when it's underpriced and try to exit it when the price is at the valuation or hovering somewhere around it. If you become too greedy and try to overshoot that, chances are you might miss out the optimum exit point. And with that, we come to the end of this video. Do give us a like if you've enjoyed the content and subscribe to our page for more such videos. If you want a much more detailed description of all the anomalies discussed here and a bonus tip, refer to our blog, the link for which has been provided in the description box below. Thank you and happy investing.